Daily Boost uh, today with uh, Dr. Charles and Deepen. And um, we are, we've been talking about the Word of God last week, the, the amazing Word of God. And I want to welcome you this morning. Uh, for those that are in Asia, it's probably evening now, uh, nighttime. And uh, those in Africa, we want to make sure that you all feel welcome. I want to talk to you about the spectrum of reality understanding the Word of God. But uh, we'll just take a moment and just worship. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. Um, uh, let me know where you are. I see uh, Oli. God bless you. We have Shri Jit. God bless you. We have Corrine. God bless you. How are you this morning? I want to just share with you some things God has put in my heart about the Word of God so that we can uh, have a, a good time of fellowship this morning. God is at work both to will and to do of his good pleasures in you. I want to encourage you. We're going to be um, sharing this with all the friends and uh, people that want to participate this morning. I will make it a sharp one. We'll be talking about understanding the spectrum of reality of the Word of God. The Word of God is my reality. Regardless of what you see, feel, touch, taste, makes no difference. The Word of God is working mightily. Hallelujah. So we want to share this with other people. Uh, let me know. You can hear me. The sound is okay. The video is okay. I want to make sure everybody's on board with me this morning. Uh, and God is going to do something great in your life this morning. I, I just, I'm rejoicing in the Lord because I know God's got my back. Hallelujah. Regardless of what you're facing today, God, hallelujah, God has had something good for you. Uh, we have Austin uh, Austin Kendrick, all the way from San Diego, welcome on board this morning. I want to talk to you about a spectrum of reality in the Word of God. The Word of God is always working. Let me know how the sound is. Let me know how the video is. Um, and then I can share with you something amazing today. Get ready for an encounter of the Word of God. It will be coming to you um, right from here to you. It's going to be it's going to be an exciting morning. Good morning, good morning from heavenly places. I love that. Good morning, heavenly. Good morning, Alami Day. We missed you yesterday. I don't know what happened, but um, we had a great time uh, with the word yesterday. So welcome on board. We have my sister-in-law, Rita. God bless you. Sound sounds great. Thank you. Um, we see that you're joining us from different places. We have Johannes. Killian, God bless you. I'm glad you've joined me this morning. We will be talking about uh, the spectrum of reality. Spectrum of reality of the Word of God. The Word of God is alive and is active, is sharper than any two-edged sword. I've been talking about last Friday. Hello, Valerian. We have uh, Stephanie. Bless you. It was nice to see you yesterday at the service. But we're talking about the spectrum of of reality living in a world of possibility living a world where Jesus is alive the Word of God is working in your life and um, I know it is going to be a great morning of possibilities get ready for something amazing to happen to you today the Word of God is working mightily is working mightily in us It's working in you and is working in me hallelujah so um, just let me know. You can share this with others. Good morning, Stephanie. I love you. You can share this with others um, that are watching. We have Pastor Victoria with that. God bless you. Share this with, with others. We're talking about the, the spectrum of, <laughs> of reality. A spectrum of reality. In life, we have um, people are living in the same city, in the same, um, people are living in the same place. But they're living in different realities. What is real to one person might not be the same experience and reality to somebody else. And why is that? Somebody that says, hello, Sharon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, we, we wish, uh, thank you all for your partnership in the gospel. It's been amazing. Um, uh, I tell you, we had a great time in Indonesia and Nigeria. We were watching the power of God unleashed uh, in the conference. Uh, we, I'm going to give you a nice little you know, taste of what God did in Indonesia. We have uh, 
in Saul, my dear brother and friend back all the way back home. God bless you. I'm glad you joined me this morning. So we are talking about the spectrum of reality. The spectrum of reality. You see, in life, people are living based on the revelation they have. So a person that is going through a financial situation, a person that is poor, you can't tell them they're not poor. That is their reality. A person that is rich, that is their reality. Amen. I have Dr. Donna's on board. Hallelujah. Now, a person that is poor, that's real to them. You can't tell them they're not poor. And a person that is rich, that's their reality. To a poor man, he thinks this is how things are. To a rich man, he's thinking this is how things are. They are living in two extremes of reality. To one person, their reality could be they are sick. To another person, hallelujah, their reality is they are healthy. My question is, what reality are you living in? It's a choice. Life should not be lived accidentally. Life should not be lived accidentally. Life should be lived on purpose. One of the most amazing books I read many years ago, probably 25 years ago, was by Dr. Kenneth Hagen. It's called Plan, Purpose, and Pursuit. It's a very good book. I, I, I would recommend that to people. It's talking about understanding plan, purpose, and pursuit. Staying on purpose, focused on things. So I said that living life, your reality is your choice. But I see here some people say, but, well, I, I, I'm stuck in this place. Friends, you don't have to be stuck. That's the good news. You never have to be stuck in a place. Why is one person living in a reality of sickness and then the other person is living in the reality of good health? Plan, purpose, and pursuit. Okay? Listen, why is one person living in a reality of sickness and the other one is living in a reality uh, of, of, uh, of perfect health? Why is one person living in uh, penury and the other one is living in overflow? Why, why is that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, we had a great time at the Lagos Crusade. Hi, Tanya. It was amazing. The crusade in Lagos was amazing, amazing, amazing. Hallelujah. So we are talking about realities and living in a spectrum. Life is like a spectrum, a whole spectrum of reality, a whole spectrum of reality. To one person, their reality could be poverty. To the other person, their reality is abundance. Why? What determines it? You live by your revelation. You live by your faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You live by the revelation you have of life. So how can somebody that is sick change the reality? How can they change the reality? I can tell you it's easy. Somebody that has multiple sclerosis, somebody that has a backache, somebody that has maybe that is blind or deaf, how can they change their reality? What changes your reality is what words you're hearing. Your reality, where you are today, can change based on the word of God you hear. Faith comes by hearing and that faith can change your world. That faith can change your world. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You see, your reality can be changed by your revelation that you have of the word of God. So I was talking whole, all this week about the power of the word of God, the spectrum of reality. In Psalms 119, 
verse 89, it says, Your word, O Lord, is forever settled. It's settled. Are you with me? The word of God is already settled. I like that. I like that. The word of God is already settled. We have to come to the place where we have settled the word of God. So how can I change where I am? How can I change the reality? Hallelujah. We have Ramon. God bless you. How can I change the reality? I said Psalm 119. Psalms 119. Verse 89. This is what the Bible says. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Hello, last God bless you. Good morning, Stephen. I'm glad you guys have joined me today. The, the word of God is already settled. That means whatever God is doing, Hallelujah. Whatever God is doing, it's already settled. There is nothing new under the sun. It's just new to you. What God does to you is new. But to him, it's always the same. To us, it is new. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when we are talking about living in a spectrum of reality... To one person, the reality could be sickness. The other person, the reality is good health. What's the difference? Revelation. And your reality is your choice. You live by the revelation you have. To a person that thinks that sickness is normal, that is the revelation they have. And they're struggling to live a life without sickness. That is impossible. So when you begin to change your re revelation with the word of God, your reality will change. So I'm talking today to get you started this week. We're going to start it. I want you to understand the power of the implanted word. What happens when the word of God is alive in you? Jesus loves some more, maybe, and uh, now God loves you just the same. God loves you just the same. God loves everybody the same. Now, God loves everybody just the same, but it's how he expresses it or how you perceive his love. You see, I respond to him out of love, not out of fear. There are others that respond to God out of fear, not out of love. So your reality is based on your revelation. So life is not... I mentioned it's not accidental. Life is lived on purpose. It's a choice. I choose today to live life on the mountain top. Choose today to live life on the mountain top. Living life on the place of possibilities and living life from a pers perspective of I cannot lose, I cannot fail, I cannot quit. Live life on that place and something great will begin to happen to you. Are you hearing me? <laughs> it's a choice I'm making. <laughs> I'm making a choice today living life on the dimension. We had a great time in Lagos. We had a great time in Solo. We had a great time in Semarang in Indonesia. I want to say hello to all my lovely people from all those places. Hallelujah. Hear this. It is going to be an amazing, an amazing time this week. You are a possibility. You are a success. You are full of potentialities. Every day you are responding to God's abilities. Every day you're responding. Every day you'll see life will throw you all kinds of curves. The Bible talked about the storms of life will come. It happens to every house. But the question is, how do you respond to it? Do you react or respond? So we are talking about the spectrum of reality. The spectrum of reality. God and his word are one. You have to understand that. We have to learn to trust the word of God. 
there is a spectrum of reality. To somebody, sickness is normal. To another person, um, um, health is normal. What will move a sick person from one place to another? It is revelation. The revelation that you have of God's word. That's all it takes. The revelation you have of God's word. When you have a clear revelation of the word of God, something amazing begins to take place in your life. It begins to change your reality and it shifts down that spectrum. From sickness to divine health. I'm not talking about being healed. You come from sickness, revelation comes, you are healed, and it keeps approaching before it realizes you start walking in good health. And you even forget what sickness feels like because of revelation. Because of revelation. Hallelujah. Because of revelation. The more revelation you have of the Word of God, the more the reality becomes more conscious of Christ or becomes like Christ. You become more Christ conscious than sickness conscious than poverty conscious, you become Christ conscious. Are you hearing me? So what I'm talking about today is to help you build you in the Word of God. Is to build you in the Word of God. I'm going to be going through a few scriptures that will help you get built up in the Word of God. Hallelujah. You see, the human body is made of many souls. You see, the lab cannot make a human body. You can make cells, but you cannot make life. What is life? Life is that which is of God and has been transmitted into nature to make it come alive. Life is that which is of God. The Bible says you are of God. You are of God. Life is that which is of God. Which is of God, not just from God, which has the substance of God. That which is of God and has been transmitted into nature to make nature to come alive. When Jesus made a statement, he said, if you don't, if you don't praise me, even the very nature, the rocks, will come alive because in other words he is saying i can transmit my, the, the god life into rocks and even rocks can come alive even rocks can come alive in other words life is that which is of god that which is of god which god has transmitted into nature to make it come alive so if Jesus said, if you don't cry, if, if, if you don't uh, worship me, even the very rocks can cry out. In other words, I, can, I have the ability, <laughs> are you following me today? I have the ability to cause even dead rocks, I can, com I can transmit that which is of me, of God, into nature, and even the rocks will cry out. That which is of God, which has been, let me tell you, if you understand what Zoe is, it's that which is of God that has been transmitted into nature that will cause it to come alive. Why would Jesus make a statement like that? Why would he say? Even the very rocks will cry out. In other words, I can transmit into rocks. That which is of God to cause even dead rocks to come alive. There is such a force in God, in the life of God, that even rocks can come alive. Now, think about why he used the, 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 the word rocks. The rocks, they are so dead, rocks don't have life in them. But he said, I can transmit my very life to cause something that is that has no chance of being alive, of even getting alive. It's a rock, but I can cause my life to be transmitted into even a rock 
to make the rock come alive and it will praise me. <laughs> so I want you to understand what I'm talking about today. Don't miss what I'm talking about today. That which is of God, that which is of God, which has been transmitted into nature to make it come alive. Ephesians 2 1. It said, He, we has He made to come alive, who were once dead, who were once dead, we were once dead. He caused us because He transmitted that which is of God into our nature to cause our nature to come alive. I hope you understand that. To come alive. To come alive. That's what I'm talking about today. The very life and the essence of changing your spectrum of reality. When the word of God comes inside of you, it produces all that God is. And all of a sudden, something on the inside of you comes alive. And the more revelation you have, the more you go down the scale of reality, down the spectrum of reality, from penury, from penury, to prosperity from sickness to living a life of divinity no sickness no disease Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 he said you has he made to come alive I like the Word of God you and on Friday remember I want you to go back and listen to Friday on Friday I was talking about what happens that as powerful as the Word of God is, there is something that stops the Word of God from operating, and you can find that in Mark chapter 7. The Bible says, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hear this. It says that because of your traditions, because of rituals, because of religion, because of man-made ideas, Jesus said, you are more focused on the traditions of the elders. You have made the word of God of no effect. You've made the, this, this word that created the universe of no effect. I want to transmit, God says, my that which is of me, I want to transmit it into nature, into your nature, that is rock. I want to translate it. I will take out the, the heart of stone and I'll put the heart of flesh, a heart that is full of life. In other words, that's what he's saying today to you. Hallelujah. And we have, we have my lovely, lovely daughter from Denmark. Rehema, bless you. I see the children are doing very well. My grandkids are doing very well. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about that which is of God that has been transmitted into nature, that which is of God transmitted into nature to cause nature to come alive. El Shanti loved you. That which is of God that has been transmitted into nature. All of a sudden, there is something on the inside of you that is vibrant, is full of, there's a force being released from the inside of you. There is a force that's been released. One of the days in Indonesia, um, it, the, the last night when we were in Semarang, I, I did something. For those of you that were there, you could, you could remember what I did. And I said to the people, I just walked around a space. I said, enter into that space. When the people entered into that space, one after another, they were getting healed. I like doing crazy things like that. Why? I know that what God has made available can't... Guys, I like, to, I like to experiment with the power of God. I like to push boundaries and see what can this power do? What can God do beyond what I have read? God is bigger than the revelation I have of him. I want to go into him more to discover more of who he is in me. Hallelujah. That's how I think. I like to think like that. I think it's a pretty good way of thinking. <laughs> You see, I, I, I push boundaries because I want to see how much, how big God is. But religious people are always scared of that. Oh, well, brother, you got to be careful. You don't want to tempt God. I said, God, God cannot be tempted with evil. He is God. If God is tempted, 
then he must not be God. God cannot be tempted with evil. God is too big to be tempted by those things. He is my father. I have his nature. His nature that is in him has been transmitted into me. <laughs> and I am alive. I am full of life. I am overflowing with that life. And you can have that, have that same life too. He is so big and so magnanimous, so generous to me. And I tell you, I am so glad to be his son. Are you glad to be his child? I'm so excited that I'm not religious. I have kept aside those religious mindsets. Hallelujah. Jesus was speaking in Mark chapter 7. Demetrio, God bless you. God bless you. Watching from Arizona. God bless you. <laughs> I am so full of that nature. I am so full of the very life of divinity that it's transmitted to anyone listening to me and they'll begin to produce a different kind of reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> there is too much life that, that you cannot contain that. I, I, boy, oh boy, I'm so excited about my Jesus. <laughs> oh boy, so glad I'm not religious. Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, it says, verse 5, Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciple according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? Oh boy, I hear that. How come you don't do it like us? How come we don't do it like the traditions? I said, my case is different. I'm coming directly from headquarters. So if I'm coming from the headquarters, I am not bound by your limitations. I operate by a different set of rules, and my papa loves it. <laughs> Think about David. He ate the showbread that was kept exclusively for the priest. He was a king, but he had a revelation that he was not just a king, he was a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Boy, oh boy, that's a whole topic for another day. But for now, what am I telling you? I'm telling you there is another dimension, folks. There is another dimension of living very in this very place that we are in today. You see... Christians want to go to another level. I keep telling them, I don't do levels anymore. I am in the highest level any human can be. I am on the level of God. I am on the level of God. I am not going to another level. Oh, let's go to another level. I am, in the, I am seated in him far above principalities and powers. I am in the highest level you can ever be. But I am living in the highest level, but I need to operate in a different dimension in that level. Dimensions. I'm a multi-dimensionalist. I operate in dimensions in this level, on this earth, in the city, where everybody else is operating in, in, in a certain, certain dimension. I want to go into different dimensions. I'm operating in dimensions. What's the difference between levels? Level you go up, dimensions, that means you are the highest level, and from that order, the highest level, you, what do you do? You transcend what is seen. You transcend, that means you go and operate in a totally different dimension from what others are used to. That means when everybody gets sick around you, you don't get sick. When troubles befall everybody else, you are the one that can stand and become the support for others. I am a multi-dimensionalist. I operate in different dimensions. While I am in this place, on this earth, my reality is different. You come to me, life has got to come to you. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So when I'm talking about this, I am talking about how you can operate in a totally different dimension, the spectrum of reality. What is your reality? What moves you? And it's not, it's not by praying long hours. I believe in prayers. Jesus said that. He said, it's not by your long prayers or by your loud prayers that you may be hear, heard. Revelation is what makes everything different. 
That's what I'm talking about. So I am very excited because I know we are operating at a different dimension today. I transcend culture. I transcend. See, I don't conform. I transform. And when I transform, I transcend. I just don't conform. I never conform. Be not conformed to the world's way of thinking. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed, but rather be transformed. Be transformed. When you transform, you transcend. When you transcend, you manifest divinity. A different dimension of operation. Are you catching on to this today? <laughs> Something on the inside of you is seeking an expression and is the very life of deity the life of god coming on the inside of you you are transformed and you are transcending you're no longer i, I was thinking about the meetings in lagos nigeria we just came from last week and the meetings in indonesia two weeks ago what a marvelous time to see people walk into a different dimension of living a different dimension of living. I am talking about living in a spectrum where your reality is more Christ conscious than sin conscious, than failure conscious, but more conscious of the Christ nature, of the nature of Christ, the nature of deity in the human form. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, somebody comes to me with a prophetic word and tell me, man of God, thus saith the Lord. Lovely. That's wonderful. I like the prophetic words. I don't despise it. But there is something on the inside of me that seeks the expression, the very life of deity is coming full force to you. Hello, Christine. We had a great time last night. Hallelujah. We had a great meeting yesterday. It was wonderful. Hallelujah. Comfort, God bless you. I'm talking about living on the dimension of God, living beyond where you are being, living with a Christ consciousness. I am so conscious of the Christ nature that sometimes when you try to explain that or talk to people about that, they seem like you're, they tell you're living in a different world. Yes, I am living in a different world, but I'm living in this world too. <laughs> what am I saying? We are not of this world. We are in this world, but we are of a different world, and we are manifesting that world that we are of in the now, that which is of God, that has been transmitted into nature to cause everything in nature to come alive, becoming conscious of divinity. Are you catching on to this? I am so full of life. Are you full of that life? Is that life at work in you, or are you just reading books? <laughs> Are you with me? The very life of divinity, of deity, coming into a human person. And then you become amazing. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Praise God. I love, I love the word of God. When it comes to you, it comes in power. It comes full of glory. It comes full of wonders. Jesus said in Mark chapter 7. He answered them in verse 6. He says, well... Has Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. How be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, the traditions of men. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men as the washing of pots, cups, and many other such things. You do. Verse 9. I'm reading from Mark chapter 7. I hope you're with me. I'm talking about living in a spectrum of reality. Living, how do you move from one spec, from one part? How can you move from becoming sin conscious, from becoming on a sickness conscious, becoming poverty conscious, th those things around you must respond and resonate to the word of God that's in you, to the revelation you have of the word of God. Are you, are you, are you with me? Are you, are you catching on to what I'm saying? Are you catching on to what I'm saying today? Because I believe that there is something 
<laughs> something beautiful on the inside of you that is seeking an expression today. Something amazing on the inside of you, the very life of deity, the dimension of a king waiting to manifest in these last days. That is being manifested today. As I'm speaking to you, you are operating in a different dimension now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to look at Mark chapter 7, reading verse 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 9. This is what the Bible says. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandments of God, and you keep your own traditions. You keep your own traditions. Verse 13, it says, Making the word of God of none effect through your traditions, which you have delivered, and many such like things you do ye. And verse 14 says, And when he called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you. I don't understand. It says there's nothing from within a man that, it said there's nothing from without a man that entering to him can defile him. That means there is nothing on the outside that comes into you that can mess you up. If anything happens to you, it's what's on the inside. Hallelujah. Listen to what Jesus is saying here. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile him. In other words, the external, the exterior can never determine how you get defiled. What causes your defilement has to do with how you think. What is how you see things from the inside, and when you express it, that's what brings defilement. In other words, something on the inside of you, if it is pure and conscious of Christ, when it comes out of you, it cannot defile you because the purity of Christ comes forth. Keep your heart tender, keep your heart pure, keep your heart conscious. Let, let heaven fill your thinking. Think on good stuff. On the inside, that's where the work is done. On the inside, meditate on the Word of God, and you begin to operate in a different spectrum of reality. Are you with me today? I hope you folks are with me today. You're learning something that is going to help you today. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? What am I talking about today? I'm talking about entering a spectrum of reality. The Bible says, I hope you can follow me. I hope you're following me today. I want to make sure that you are on board with me. Something amazing is taking place. <laughs> Oh, wow, wow, wow. I'm so excited this morning because God is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasures. So I'm going to move this thing as quickly as we can. There is something on the inside so strong. The word of God is God coming to you in the form of a seed. Now what happens? You have a spectrum of reality. You're living in one spectrum. You want to make a change. What do you do? The revelation you have is what changes where you live on that spectrum. From poverty to prosperity, from sickness to health, wherever, what part of the spectrum you are is determined by the revelation you have received. Are you hearing me? There is something, and people say, well, oh, this is, the enemy is attacking me, or oh, this one is doing this, this one is fighting against me. I keep smiling. I say, none of those things can stop you but you. There is something so amazing on the inside of you. Somebody so amazing on the inside of you that wants to express himself on the outside. Let the Jesus, let Christ 
consciousness develop in you so much so that you are so fearful with his word. Hallelujah. When you eat food, the food you eat is broken down. It's broken down into your body and life continues. Life continues. You don't find the food you eat in your body. No, it goes and is processed. It is transmitted and absorbed into your system. Something acts on that food and changes it. And then it produces nourishment in your body. The life that continues in you is sustained by the food you eat. If you don't eat, after a while you die. But you eat this food, it goes into your system, and then it is transformed into something that extends your life daily. In other words, the food that you eat is nourishing you and nourishing the life that's on the inside of you. Are you hearing me? Something happens to the food that is broken down. Transmutation happens. It takes place and then the food that is eaten is broken down into your system and it sustains your life. The same way when you eat the word of God. It is broken down into your spirit and it begins to produce the life of God on the inside of you. A transmutation takes place and your spirit, your soul, your body now becomes a living expression of that which you have eaten, the word of God. Are you following me today? Are you following me today? Ma Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. This is what the Bible declares. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Jesus was speaking, he said, when he was being tempted. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. <clears throat> man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When you hear the word of God, don't hear it like you're just reading a book. Hear it as if God is feeding your spirit and live by that. When you live by that, it will produce everything you need. It will be broken down and it will come to you in power. I hope you're following me. <laughs> I get excited. You see, sometimes when I'm teaching you, I get so fed by this revelation. I thank God I can share it with you because it energizes me to remind myself of what God is doing in me today. <laughs> I, I have as much kick as you, as much excitement as you, because the Word is alive. <laughs> wow, poor devil. He's in trouble again. <laughs> We have a goal. We have a goal, people. We want to reach 100 million people in Indonesia alone. Don't tell me it cannot be done. We are going to do it together. Hallelujah. We, are going to, we want to reach a billion souls, at least, in this ministry. We can do it. Don't tell me we can't do it. China is beckoning. Very soon we're going to be in China, and that's where they have all the population. <laughs> God is, God is causing favor to happen in China. I will pray for an effective door to come to China and minister love to them. We call it a festival of love and miracles. Hallelujah. Poor devil. Poor devil. We are coming all over the world. We are coming to the United States. All traditions, I, I have to serve the enemy notice. Every man-made tradition in the United States served notice today. We are knocking it off. Hallelujah. We are coming with the word of God and we're not allowing, giving it a place of tradition that will come to oppose the word of God. We are coming fast. We're coming hard. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm saying this to you because all over the world, the world is ready. The 
harvest is ready, we need to make a run for it while the harvest is ready. Are you with me? Are you with me? Living by the word of God. The word of God comes to your body, into your spirit, into your soul. It becomes part of you. It works in your spirit. You are born again. Are you hearing me? You know, one of the things I, I tell people, listen, if you really, do, are you, do you really want to see God moving your city? Come on, invite us to come. Just give us four days. Seven days, we give you seven ways. Give us four days, we show you the wonders of heaven in your city. <laughs> I feel sorry for the poor devil. I don't have time for religious nonsense. I just want to see Jesus alive in every city, in every person, in every corner of the streets. Jesus' life available to our world. That's our mission. That's why we come to you. So that, that same life that has been infused into us can be infused into you and you can do that and infuse it in others. That's what it's all about. Are you following me today? Are you following me today? <laughs> I am so excited today because there's, some, there's something on the inside of you that's coming alive. He has made you to come alive. Something on the inside of you saying, yes, I have purpose. Yes, I can do what God says I can do. I can be anything I want to be based on what God has said. I don't have to live in this reality of pain and penury. Uh, penury. I cannot live in, the, in, the, in, in that reality of sickness. I can change and live in a place of overflow, of good stuff, of goodness, of healing, of miracles. I can live in that dimension today. My legs are supposed to walk. My eyes are supposed to see. My ears are supposed to hear. And poor devil is not stopping me. I transcend. Because I am transformed by the word, by renewing my thinking, I transcend the limitations of the world around me. I am a transcending person. <laughs> poor devil. I'm so glad you're listening to me today. You don't have to put up with that nonsense. The Word of God is nourishing you today. Is nourishing you today. Hallelujah. The Word of God works in you. When you take that Word, you eat that Word, you live by that Word, it comes to your spirit, you're born again. It comes to your soul, you are renewed in your thinking. It comes to your body, you are completely walking in divine health. Hallelujah. The Bible says you are born of the Word. 1 Peter 1, verse 23, born of the incorruptible seed of the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is what we are talking about today, the word of God, being nourished by that amazing word. The word of God is alive in us. You're born of the word. You're renewed by the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord? 1 Corinthians 2, 16. Who has known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. I am so Christ conscious. I, 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 cannot, I cannot afford to have sin consciousness in my spirit so that Satan can have nothing on me. I am conscious of the reality of Christ in the now, in me, today, reigning and ruling over every situation and circumstances. I prophesy to you that this is going to be a week of bumper harvest, that your life will never be the same, that something amazing on the increase is coming to you that is good, that is favorable to you, that is going to cause you to enjoy plenty. I declare that and I decree that to you in the name of Jesus. It is coming forth in power to you because of the transcending word. 
because of the transcending word. Something is shifting. The way you're talking, the way you're, you're communicating your life, your message, it is changing. I decree that to you. It is coming in power now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That life is coming to you, infusing in you the very nature of deity. It's coming to you now in the name of Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible declares he sent his word and healed the people. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed the people. The word of God can make a man or woman that is a failure a success. The word of God can make a fool wise. The word of God can make even the simple, can make you absolutely brilliant. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will take that word and cause it to happen. The entrance of the word gives it light, gives revelation, and the Spirit gives understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. You're being infused with the very life of God today. That life is coming to you and is coming in an amazing way to you today. God is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasures. You are not religious. Throw that thing away. You're called to do amazing with God. Let people keep judging you by their own standard. You always compare yourself to the word of God, not to people's statements. Hallelujah. The word of God in you will produce Christ consciousness in you. It will produce Christ consciousness in you. The Bible says rightly dividing the word. It's important we know how to rightly divide the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God in Hebrews 4 verses 12 and 13 is explosive. When you can embrace that word, it changes the spectrum of your reality. It's a choice you've got to make today. Hallelujah. My prayer is that your spirit and your mind is open to God and, and that he can impact you, your mind, with jewels of spiritual electricity. Hallelujah. He can impact your spirit and your mind with jewels, with power of spiritual electricity. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive that virtue of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Let's get the correction. Hebrews 4 verse 12 and 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be so infused with all of God himself. Hallelujah. Are you with me? 1 Timothy 4 verse 16. That's the last scripture I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you. 1 Timothy, this is going to be an exciting week. I want us to get started early. We're going to be running full force. It is going to be amazing. 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6. Let's look at that scripture. This is Paul writing to Timothy. He says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, the reason I'm talking to you now is, is to put you in remembrance of these things, that you should be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith. Nourished up, just the same way your food is broken down and then comes and nourishes and sustains your life, the same way you can be nourished up. You can be nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine or good teaching whereunto unto you have attained. You've come to good stuff. Stay in the good stuff. Verse 7, but refuse profane and old wives' fables. <laughs> ah, my, my, my. I like the word of God. Refuse it. It tells you to refuse all this rubbish teaching that does not nourish your spirit, that does not make you 
Christ conscious. Refuse profane. It's profane to talk rubbish about this wonderful life. And all wise fables and exercise yourself rather on the godliness. Exercise your spirit into godlikeness. Think godlikeness. Think and act and act and talk godlikeness. Like God. Exercise that. Like you're exercising your muscles. You want to do the same with what God is speaking concerning his word to you. Hallelujah. I want to read the same verse of scripture from the Message Bible. I want to read the same verse of scripture. From the, from the Message Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. I want to read it from the Message Bible. It says, you have been raised on the message of the faith, and I followed sound teaching. Now, pass on this counsel to the followers of Jesus there, and you be a good servant of Jesus. Stay clear of silly stories that get dressed up as religion. Exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. <laughs> wow. I like the word of God. <laughs> I cannot get away from it. It's, too, it's just loaded. It's too loaded. He said, stay away, stay clear of silly stories <laughs> that get dressed up as religion. Exercise daily in God. You need to go to God's gym every day and exercise your spirit by nourishing the word of God in you. No spiritual flabbiness, please. <laughs> I like that. Work out. Work out in the gymnasiums are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more is far more so, making you fit today and forever. Hallelujah. You can count on this. Take it to heart. Hallelujah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's why I said I needed to read it from the Message Bible because it is loaded with good stuff. So for today, I want to encourage you to follow after God-likeness. The, the character, the, the, the tangibility of the word is you. You make it and give it life. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm going to give you three things that will help you today get yourself on the right course. Number one, let the word of God be richly in you, in all wisdom. Get that word inside of you a lot. Get it inside of you. Number two, find a place daily to listen to the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to relate to the Word of God, and to study the Word of God, to show yourself approved. Use a concordance. Do a search of certain scriptures. Get a place daily and make that your time of nourishment. Just as you spend time eating food, spend time eating the Word. Take time and eat the word of God. So number two, find a place daily, hallelujah, to get on the word and eat the word of God, to study the word, hallelujah, to show yourself approved. Number three, meditate on that word. It requires visualization. See what God is saying. Use your imagination. Nothing wrong with it. Joshua 1.8, meditate on the word day and night. Some things Through the eyes of your understanding. Through the, see things through the eyes of the word. See things through the eyes of the word. Meditate on that word and see what God sees. You will come up with a different revelation of what living is all about. I hope this is helping you today. I hope that it is helping bring life to you so that you can understand the big things and the big plans God has for you. Hallelujah. I can just give you two more. Number four, speak only the word. Don't speak situations and circumstances. Speak the word. 
Number five, act on the inner picture in your spirit. When you do that, something incredible begins to happen. I want to encourage you today, for those of you that if you're receiving spiritual nourishment through this teaching, consider sowing a seed. Go to Christlove.org and sow a wonderful seed there and let it be a blessing to you. We are still looking at some ways of how you can connect with us live while we're teaching when we have q a you can come up on live i can put you on the screen you can ask your questions and then we can give you answers i am so excited about what god is doing this is going to be a great week i want to th say thank you for all of you that supported us to go to indonesia don't keep supporting us keep on supporting us don't stop supporting us keep on supporting us every time don't keep back from your support it helps us bring this to you we're bringing this to you free. I want to encourage you. We have the business meetings coming up, beginning, end of this month, beginning of next month. We want you to be a part of it. It's going to be an explosive time. Hallelujah. Number five is act on the inner picture. The pictures you see in your spirit, act on them. You become a wonder and a sign to your world. That's what I want to talk about. I hope this is helping you very much today. Please write and let me know how this has been a blessing to you. Go to my inbox, inbox me, and let me know how this is blessing you and what you've learned from it, how it's impacted you, and uh, how God is doing, what God is doing with you. And I look forward to another exciting day tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to do a bit of Q&A also. Let me know how you're doing, and we can get this thing rolling. I want to say thank you again for joining me on uh, Daily Boost. We're going to be consistent. We're getting back to doing things at work. I want to say I love all of you. Love you, Maria. Love you, Heavenly. I can't wait to see you guys come to a meeting with me. And I want to, I want to let you guys know next year we have a lot of places to go to. This year is not yet over. We are still looking maybe one or two places to go to. Keep supporting us. I want to say I love you. I love you. I love you. From my heart, I know that you are an amazement to the enemy. Satan has nothing on you. All that he sees is sees the brilliance of God in a human form. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. You have a great day.